Question. You, yes you, are tasked with concealing a massive defined object in the equivalent of a large single colored flat field to protect it from enemy attack. How do you do it? Well, to put it simply, this is no easy question to answer. In the early months of the First World War, the British fleet had realized that. Germany's new aquatic weapon of choice was that of the U-boat, a ridiculously successful naval tactic that had sunk one-fifth of Britain's merchant fleet by 1916. The Brits were hard-pressed for ideas by that point and had tried everything from the obvious to the absurd. Some of the highlights are disguising ships as clouds by covering them with canvas. With this idea, the wind became their chief enemy. Another idea was covering ships in large mirrors to reflect their horizon and conceal a ship, but sunlight reflected off of them instead and would make them an incredibly noticeable bright light on the high seas. They even considered disguising ships as whales. This is all real, by the way. Another idea was making them look like large islands. They tried concealing one ship this way, and it didn't even leave New York Harbor before they realized this was a stupid idea. The Dutch had something to say about this when they disguised one of their Indonesian minesweepers in World War II as an island to escape the Japanese. The ship was called... I'm not even gonna try that one. So how do you conceal a ship on the high seas? Well, I know you're clearly thinking that the obvious answer is to make them incredibly defined and visible on the horizon, but make them as ambiguous as humanly possible with weird misshapen patterns that look like Ringo Starr's MS paint art. This idea came from the head of Norman Wilkinson, a British artist and sailor who was one of the first to realize a revolutionary thought. You can't hide a ship. Ships are too large to blend in with the horizon, and billowing smoke pouring into the sky made them very, very visible. You can't make a ship hard to see, so why not make them hard to hit? Thus, complex and intricate paint schemes were implemented, many of which probably inspired John Lennon's acid trips. Now how on earth would an optical illusion make a ship hard to hit? Wouldn't it make it more detectable? U-boats don't discriminate, and their only objective is to sink you and then speed away. Well, U-boats are picky. They prefer clear shots on specific areas of the ship that will maximize the probability of the ship sinking. This is for two reasons. Firstly, U-boats don't have an infinite supply of torpedoes, and operating this far from a friendly port was a genuine concern for supplies. If they're taking a shot, they want a considerable chance that it will hit. The second reason is that torpedoes take a while to load, and if they fire a torpedo and it misses, their target will know that they're under fire and will probably begin speeding away as fast as possible. Preparing torpedo tubes could take upward of 40 minutes, lifting a one-ton water missile with hoisting pulleys into a tube that required time to pressurize. Not to mention that extra torpedoes could be stored in a manner that required the sub to surface to lift it out of storage into the torpedo room. When SMU-103 tried to sink the liner Olympic, which was in dazzle paint might I add, the U-boat was spotted while filling her torpedo tubes with water while slightly surfaced, prompting Olympic to ram the U-boat, forcing U-103's crew to scuttle her. It was dangerous to surface, as the risk of being spotted meant that you were pretty much defenseless if they found you. Surfacing, however, was often necessary to reload, and very necessary to repressurize the sub. With the amount of time it takes to reload, you could count on the target fleeing the scene, that is if they don't try to bite back. Now, let's apply this mindset to Dazzle Paint. One of its most basic functions was masking the direction the ship is going by making its bow and stern ambiguous. Ships are moving targets, so subs would have to accommodate by firing the torpedo slightly forward of its target so that it would be in position when the torpedo hits. By making a ship's direction unrecognizable, U-boats would have to reconsider wasting a precious torpedo on a potential miss. There was always going to be an element of guesswork in these attacks, and Dazzle Paint took advantage of that. Now the real question is, did it work? Well, when Norman Wilkinson was proposing his dazzle paint idea to King George V of England, he prepared a setup that had a ship model with dazzle paint simulated on the high seas with a quote-unquote periscope 10 feet away. Wilkinson had the king look through the periscope and asked him what direction the ship was sailing. Side note, before King George was in line for the throne, he served in the Royal Navy, he knew what he was doing. King George said that it was sailing south by west. Plot twist, Wilkinson revealed it was sailing east by southeast. The king was quite impressed by this display, and soon the Admiralty began to wonder if they had really found the solution to their U-boat crisis. In the last two years of the war, dazzle paint was used extensively by the British, Americans, and Canadians, most commonly on troop carriers ferrying soldiers from the New World to the Old. Here are some of the highlights of the best dazzle paint designs that I've found. HMTS Olympic had a black, white, and blue mixed pattern. HMTS Austerlitz was a pattern oriented with a very defined bar style. USS West Muhammad's bow messes with my head and is probably one of the more effective ones in appearance. USS Nebraska had a really cool diagonal line triangle pattern to it that looks like it belongs to a bikini at Hot Topic. 
USS Leviathan, actually the sea's German superliner, SS Vaterland, had this really cool, pointy, gear-like look. HMS Kildingen was covered in lines, misdirection of the lore, but standard and messy appearance. HMTS Mauritania just straight up had a checkerboard. This one's from World War II. USS PT-170 had an iconic zebra style. Now why exactly do I bring up Dazzle Paint now? Well, for one, I'm hard-pressed for video ideas, and secondly, the Royal Navy announced the HMS Tamar will have a pseudo-dazzle paint scheme. Frankly, I don't see it, but that's just me. This announcement didn't exactly rock the press, but the British Admiralty says they're going to start painting more of their river-class patrol boats in dazzle paint. So that's cool, I guess. In the end, dazzle paint looks cool, acts as a good optical illusion, and is even said to have inspired Picasso when he saw a dazzle-painted cannon roll down a street in Paris. That's all I got for you today. I hope you learned something. Alright, I'm sorry, but I've been looking for a place to throw this in.